Hi there. In Intune's service release 2308, Microsoft introduced remote help for Android devices. Now you might already be familiar with remote help tools such as the Microsoft One or by third parties such as TeamViewer for your Windows devices. But this introduces a new device or help desk to device connection specifically for Android devices and can be particularly useful for your frontline workers. So let's jump in and take a look how we set this up. Right, so we're going to start off in the Microsoft Intune Admin Center. And the first thing we need to do is head into Tenant Administration and then Intune Add-ons. Now, the reason we're doing this is because the remote help um, service, if you like, with Intune is not included as standard. And it's now included as part of the Microsoft Intune suite, where you can see here it's got remote help. Intune Plan 2 and uh, EPM. There are other bits or services added to this, but if I quickly show you the Microsoft plans and pricing here, you can see you've got the Microsoft Intune suite and there is an additional per user per month charge. So you'll need to purchase that if you want to kind of use this service. Now heading back into here. So we need to enable this add-on and I can either do the Intune suite where you can actually try this out. I think it's for 90 days, but I'm, instead of doing the whole suite, I'm just gonna do the remote help um, option here. And in order to enable this, I can try or buy, I can go to purchase the services and I'll do that, which will open up your Microsoft 365 admin center. And straight away, it's taking me into the Intune help, into remote help pane. And there's an option here, start free trial. So I'm gonna hit that and um, see what we get. We've got a 90 day subscription for 250 licenses. So I'm gonna hit the try now. And it's uh, it looks like it's enabled it. Uh, we've got confirmation and then I can hit the uh, continue button. Okay. So if we head back into um, Intune here, I'll refresh the screen. And you can see it's telling me I've got 80, 89 days left in the trial and I can look at the details. So we quickly popped it over to the Microsoft documentation here. And I just want to highlight from their point of view what the key capabilities are for this uh, Android remote help. And you can see here we've got screen sharing, full control, unattended control and compliance. Now, very quickly, this essentially means screen sharing, you're viewing the remote screen, and this is probably has the minimal impact from the end user privacy perspective. But if you then need to take full control, you then have that ability too. Um, and in cases where you don't need the presence of an end user, say the device is in a cupboard somewhere, but switched on, but you need to make updates or troubleshoot something, you can go for unattended control. And wrapping this up, you've also got compliance warning. So if uh, an, a support or helper connects to that user's device, but it's not compliant, you'll be notified of that to make decisions around uh, the risks connecting to that device. Um, the next point I'll just want to raise is the supported devices. You can actually remote help on Samsung and Zebra. We won't be touching Zebra in this video, but those devices um, basically need to be enrolled and enrolled with an Android Enterprise dedicated profile. So take note of that. So the next thing we need to do is make sure we have a user with the uh, remote help license. So I'm gonna pick a user here, it's gonna be Annie Jones. Um, go into my licenses and now we've enabled those licenses and we click the assignments, we should have the option and there you have it. Microsoft Remote uh, Intune Remote Help. So we'll switch that on and I'll save that for that user. So the next thing we need to do here is actually go and switch the uh, remote help on within our tenant. Okay, so if you go into tenant administration, you'll see an option for remote help. And within the settings option, you can see mine is currently uh, disabled. So if you click the configure, uh, we will enable that um, where it says allow remote help to unenroll devices, we don't want that. So I'm gonna keep that off and disable chat. So it's no, so it's on. So I'm gonna keep that as it is and hit the save button. So automatically it's enabled our tenant and this then gives us the ability to use this service 
for our devices. But before we do that, we have to make sure that we have set up the Remote Help app and configured it for use on the device. So we're gonna do that now. So we're gonna head off into apps applications and then obviously for Android because it's for Android devices. And what we wanna do is add the remote help. Now you'll see here, I've already got the remote help. I just wanted to add it in for uh, for the purpose of time here really, but I'll go through the process. We go select an app, uh, manage Google Play, and you will need a connection to the Google Play store with a, uh, a, a admin account to your Google Play store, right? So you will need to do that first. But if we select the application, and then once you're in there, um, you can do a search for remote help. And that's the remote help, uh, help app. And you would need to select that. And then once you select that, you can sync it. And if we go back to ours here, you've got that device, uh, that application already on. So within the properties of that application, go into the assignments and select the devices that you want. Remember, this is to device, it's not to user with a dedicated enrollment. Um, so we're going to uh, align that against the devices that we want to deploy the app to. And once you've saved that, you can then see how that has uh, deployed down to your device and see whether that's successful. So if I look at the overview of that application, I can see that it's installed onto one of my devices. Now, before we actually go and test this out on an actual device, what we need to do now is actually create some settings for the application that we're deploying to the device. So we're going to apps and we're going to create an app configuration policy. We're going to create a managed devices. We'll give it a name. We're going to select the platform as enterprise, Android enterprise profile type as fully managed, dedicated and corporate owned work profile because we want to include it as part of the dedicated enrolled device here. And then we're going to select the actual targeted app, which in this case is the remote help app. So we select that and we hit the next. Now at this point, we want to create um, a few permissions because here what we want to achieve is minimize the impact on the end user for the device we want to automatically create the permissions rather than put the onus on the end user and those two um, permissions we need are camera and record audio so we'll select those two and we want to send the uh, or create the permission state to be auto grant so it automatically configures at this point we can click the next button and then we can add our assignment so in my case i want to go in and add, add the android dedicated devices group to this so i hit the select okay so it's telling me i've got one device there um, hit the next again review the settings that you've created and then select the create button that should create the policy as it says there it's uh, successfully created it right so we've created our app configuration policy and we've configured our remote help app to download to the device so let's bring the device i'm going to test here up so there we have our android device i'm mirroring on my screen here and let's open the remote help app now it goes straight in but you may on your device have a new pop-up come up where it's going to ask you to grant permission for overlay or well, basically they're no longer auto granting the overlay of apps on the devices so you might need to grant that now we've got the device up we should be able to test this so the first thing i want to do is go back to my actual device within intune let's go into android android devices and if i select my device i just want to show you here under compliance is saying it's not evaluated which is effectively saying that we don't have a compliance policy now if you remember one of the features relate to the compliance status of the device so let's select that device for the moment now if i hit the three dots at the end you'll see the option for remote assistance add-on preview right so let's select that and we get our three options here okay now i'm going to initially try to request screen sharing so let's launch that and see what happens 
and we've got this pop-up command remote access request now we can go and select accept on that and it comes up at the top remote assistance and there we have it so it's opened up remote access to this device within your intune console as you can see on the left hand side here and it's saying the mode is view only now i got the option either within intune i can click the as the admin person i can hit leave or as a end user perspective i've got the x at the top which i can click and that will leave the session as well the other thing we need to take notice is, as we mentioned the device you are helping is not compliant with your organization security policy exercise caution and this basically is warning you so as an admin person you may not want to go any further because the device might be vulnerable in some way so i'm going to end this session here and we click the leave um, and it's telling us that it's just prompting us are we sure we want to leave so the first thing I want to do then to rectify this is go into my um, compliance policies and go into the compliance policies and I'll make sure that it's targeting my device here so the one I want to look at is the this one here enterprise compliance policy if I go into properties and go down the screen I will go into edit of the um, assignments here and you'll see that there's there's nothing targeted right so I need to add my group so let's add, add the group in uh, Android dedicated devices so I want to select that hit the review and save and then save that so we'll wait for that to quickly deploy to my device and then we'll come back Okay, I'm back. Um, let's take a quick look at the uh, compliance policy that we pushed down to the device and see whether it's um, successful. If I go into the actual policy, uh, I can now see that we've got a compliant device. If I look at the report, there's my device. It's saying it's compliant. Right, so we can go back over to my Android device here and actually do some more testing. If I go to devices, Android Android devices I'll pick my compliant Android device out here I select the th uh, three dots at the end go back into the new remote assistance session I've got my three options if you remember and this time we're going to look at the request for control so let me click select that option and launch should see a pop-up come up on the device and there we have it remote access request I can accept that it then it should appear within my Intune console now I can do certain things within um, on this device through the Intune console as you can see as using my cursor I can actually um, go through the options of the device so I can swipe up and see all my apps that's installed um, I can go back to the home screen and I can close and leave the device um, if I so please. I can also look at the volume here and switch that up if I need to. So I've got an element of full control on this device through the Intune console and I'm not having to be physically at the device to kind of go through it. And that's the difference between the view only and the full control mode here. So I'm going to leave this session and we're going to try out the last option which is the uh, unattended remote help option so we bring up the three remote help options here I've got initiate unattended control so I'll launch that and what you see immediately on the device is that it's requesting access or full access to the device but it will wait for 30 seconds um, and basically automatically start depending on what response on so if the user does have the device open they can accept or decline but if not it will go in unattended after 30 seconds and there you have it it automatically launched without any action from the end user
So the last thing I want to show you here is basically how you monitor these sessions, these remote help sessions that take place. So if we go into tenant administration, and then if you remember that we have a remote help option, automatically on the monitor page, it's gonna give you information about the session time and the number of sessions. Now I can go into this because remote help isn't just for Android, you can remote help them to Windows as well. I can go into this and I can change the filter for the device type. So let's just pick Android here and the control on uh, the different types of remote help sessions that we initiated, right? So I'll keep them as they are for the now. For now, now I've only got Android remote help sessions here, so that's that hasn't changed. But I can go into the specific sessions, and on the individual sessions, I can see basically who the provider or the helper was uh, and the recipient. Now, in this particular case, there was there's no one aligned against my Android device. It's a dedicated uh, device. Um, so I won't actually see that, but I can see the session start, the session time, um, and I've got inf so I've got information in and around those individual sessions if you need that that level of detail. So thanks very much for watching the video. Hopefully this is giving you an insight how you can set up remote help for your Android devices and your estate. And if you like this video, please like and subscribe, and we'll see you again soon. Thanks very much.